Good evening and welcome to the August 10th Phoenixville Borough Council uh, Council meeting. Tonight we'll start with our moan of silence and Pledge of Allegiance. We good on sound? <laughs> good evening, Rich. Good evening. Okay. Good, he can hear me. <laughs> okay, we'll start with roll call. Perfect. Mr. Crack. Ms. Berkeley. Present. Mr. Dalton. Ms. Dugan. Here. Mr. Kirkner. Present virtually. Mr. Moore. Present. Mr. Soto. Mr. Weiss. Present. Mr. Ewald. Present. Mayor's not here. Manager's here. Assistance virtual. Chief down to Lieutenant down to Sergeant is here. And the solicitor is here, and one, two, three, four, five, you have a quorum. Very good, thank you. First item up for tonight's agenda is the approval of last month's regular meeting minutes uh, for July 13th. What is council's pleasure? Uh, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes from the previous meeting. Second. Motion by Mr. Weiss, second by Mr. Moore. Any corrections, amendments, or additions to last month's meeting minutes? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Mr. President, I abstain. Very good. Motion carries 5 0. Sorry, 5 0 1. Yes. We do not have any presentations tonight from council or the pub or um, consultants, so we'll move on to section five of tonight's agenda, which is public participation. Any members of the public uh, that are wishing to make uh, public participation comments tonight, please raise your hand on the Zoom platform and staff will be able to uh, promote you to be able to speak uh, to all of council here as we've done for the last year and a half. And we'll give it a few moments since there is a time delay between our broadcast and the reception. Julie, I've turned on your microphone. Okay, my name is Julie Gaudin. I'm the, um, I live at 1120 Ross Lane, Phoenixville. I am here in support of the speed change on Ross Lane. And I um, also would like to express my concern for not having a stoplight in association with the Elon Point, especially in light of the fact that there may be a new development on in East Pikeland on Township Line as well. Thank that you. That concludes my comments. Thank you, Julie. And just for the minutes, Mr. Soda has joined us at 7.05. Tracy, go ahead. I've turned on your microphone. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. I would like to start by thanking the borough for installing the barriers at the intersection of Prospect and Main Street. These are very effective in maintaining the sight distance in that area. I'd also like to thank borough staff for all the work they've done at the dog park. It is certainly appreciated. I'd also like to continue to request borough council consider alternatives to the weekly Bridge Street closure. I believe the businesses and the community as a whole would be better served by offering businesses the opportunity to utilize the parallel parking spaces along Bridge Street in front of their businesses as an extension of their business. This would give businesses additional outdoor space all week long rather than just part of the week. 
and this alternative could be continued as long as it's deemed necessary. Given the recent rise of COVID, there may be a demand for additional outdoor space for many months. This would help those businesses that would like to take advantage of additional outdoor seating or display area while allowing traffic to flow through downtown and access those businesses that rely on pass through traffic. This alternative would also maintain access to the parking lot at the corner of Bridge and Main Street. This is a balanced approach that helps both businesses and residents. And I did send uh, Borough Council an email just a couple minutes ago with some examples of this type of uh, outdoor seating from different cities around the country that I saw this summer. So um, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Christopher, I've turned on your microphone, sir. Hi, my name is Chris Gaudan. Uh, I live at 1120 Ross Lane, and I'm here to speak on behalf of the speed going through Ross Lane. First, I'd like to thank the police department and the borough for everything they've done so far, changing the speed sign and uh, having police there more often to slow everybody down. I, um, I really do think something needs to be done on Ross Lane. It's a pretty busy cut through and now with a high density housing going in at either end uh, something really needs to be looked at i know we lowered the speed from 25 to 15 but if people don't follow follow the speed limit it doesn't matter really would like to see especially in the summer months when kids are getting out of school uh some type of speed bump through there to slow everybody down thank you thank you chris thank you Elaine, I've turned on your microphone. Elaine, if you're there, you can speak. If you unmute your microphone. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. 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 sorry, I thought I had hit it. Are you, are you hearing that backlash? Yes. Oh, hold on a second. Sorry, my neighbor is with me and she's on the other laptop because when I called today, they said we had to either log on individually to speak. So she's with me. So it was her computer. I apologize for that. I wanted to first say thank you for what you've done so far with reducing the speed limit and putting up the no trucks that has reduced the amount of big commercial vehicles that have cut through Ross Lane in the last month. There from 113, there's very little that's coming through, but we're still having an issue off of Pothouse Road. What is happening is where they place the signs for the no trucks, it's on the back of the stop sign, which they can't see because it's literally like blends in with that. And then they have the other one on the sidewalk where you can't see until you actually turn on to Ross. It really should be placed over on the right hand, um, no truck, you know, the right hand turn signal come in this development. And the one on the stop sign needs to be lowered so it's more visible. But um, I wish I could say that the speeding has been greatly reduced by these changes and the, on, and the ongoing police study that has been in effect since July 18th on our street but I can't. Last Wednesday afternoon around 4.20, I was sitting on my front porch when three cars came off a of pothouse road and were racing each other through Ross Lane. They were going too fast that my ring camera couldn't record them. The police radar is set up on the other side of the road at the bottom of my driveway, making it impossible to record this action that came through. The majority of the speeding that is coming off of pothouse road now is what we're dealing with. And this is where the houses are located. We're immediately off as you turn off Pothouse Road. This is where we are. And then last Thursday night around 6 p.m., Ross Lane had a major in event involving four police officers and an out of control drunk driver who lost control of her car when she turned onto Ross Lane from Pothouse. She came up on the sidewalk and ricocheted off of several homeowners' properties before she came to a stop. One of my neighbors stood in front of her car so she couldn't drive off before the police got there. 
This was very upsetting because people were out walking, the kids were out on their bikes. We feel that it's just a matter of time before someone's seriously injured or killed. We also want you to know that if any of the homeowners on Ross Lane have damage to our properties or our vehicles, we're gonna make sure our insurance company knows that this has been an ongoing issue with the borough. There is 100% support from the homeowners on Ross Lane and the corner houses that their properties face Ross for the speed bumps. When the police dropped off the petition for the traffic study, every one of the homeowners that would be affected by these speed bumps signed it. And I understand that after the police finish their study, it's gonna go before the policy committee for final review and voting. What I want on record tonight is, last month when I logged in to listen to the policy committee meeting and the chairperson for that committee stated after they finished discussing the speeding issue for Ross Lane, that he would not vote for speed bumps. Whatever happened to keeping an open mind and looking at each situation individually? I ask tonight before you make this decision that affects the quality of my life and my neighbors, that you take the time and come out here between 4 and 7 p.m. and witness the amount of traffic and speeding that goes on. And I also want to thank Dana Dugan for her help and support. She's been wonderful. And then the last comment I want to make is I wanted <laughs> I want to comment on how you run the Zoom meeting. It restricts public from participating with council. I called today to check if we could speak to council during public participation while watching the meeting together. And I was told no, that we each had to log in individually. This is ridiculous. You do not allow any dialogue, dialogue between the council and the public. This needs to be addressed. And I also just want to remind you that you were put here by the voters and you do have to answer to us, the taxpayers of Phoenixville. Thank you for your time. Nina, I've turned on your microphone. Yes, good evening. My name is Nina Smoyer. I'm at 1118 Ross Lane. And I just want to concur with my neighbors too, that there is a problem here in Ross Lane and it's really a sense of urgency for safety that just this morning, we were sitting, my husband and I out front and watched a utility truck had to put his brakes on and pull to the side as a woman was coming down, coming towards Pothouse Road. And again, I think this is being documented on the, the uh, counter in front of our home, but sped down and the other guy yelled out, yo, <laughs> and he goes 90 miles an hour, you know? So it's not just even during the busy four to seven it's early in the morning, it's all the time. I don't know why they're compelled to uh, fly down the road. And as Elaine mentioned the other night with the police officer, even he turned and looked and said, oh, I see it's been reduced. You know, he didn't even know it was down to 15 miles. And I thank you for the 15 mile an hour change. And hopefully that will work, but so far it hasn't until people realize the magnitude, either being a ticketed and there's not enough, you know, the Phoenix book can only have so many police officers at, at all times. So in lieu of that, the speed bumps will at least make people, to my knowledge, slow down a little unless they're, you know, want car damage. And I'm one of the ones that lost the mailbox three times and people went up my lawn and uh, I have a sidewalk, but there's not grass on the one side typically like it is and children go up and down that road. And it's just a matter of time that there would be a severe incident for safety. And that's my concern. And I don't think this expense would be in any way over the life of a child. Um, and not to mention, which I don't, anybody else said, getting in and out of the driveways is impossible because people get yelling and screaming, they pass around you. It is a difficult situation. I thank you for listening. I hope that you can understand or you're welcome to come out and look at it, sit on my porch with me. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.
Justin, I've turned on your microphone. Good evening. My name is Justin Poli. Happy Taco Tuesday. I live at 1122 Ross Lane. Uh, I would like to echo what my neighbors are saying. Um, the traffic and the speed at which people drive is not acceptable. I think the reduction in the speed limit um, is, is really only cosmetic fix. People are not abiding by the, the rules and slowing down. We can't, uh, we have two young children. We take them out for walks often and we literally cannot cross the street in front of our house. We have to, you know, walk down the street quite a bit before we're comfortable crossing the street. And even then um, it's, it's fairly risky. Uh, just also pulling out of the driveway is incredibly challenging. People are speeding through here. I don't know, speed bumps certainly hopefully help. Also possibly making this a one-way street um, would possibly cut, reduce the number of uh, people that are cutting through. Anyway, thank you for listening. Thank you, Justin. Ken, I've turned on your microphone. Uh, yes. Thank you to uh, count, this is Ken Buckwalder, 1117 Ross Lane. Um, I'd like to thank council for taking this under advisement. Uh, the traffic has been incredibly uh, strong through, the, through our uh, neighborhood and lowering the speed limit, I think, is a, a great first step. And also uh, eliminating heavy truck traffic. I appreciate uh, the thoughts on that and ask council to uh, consider passing this uh, ordinance. So thank you. Thank you, Ken. Sandra, I've turned on your microphone. I actually, hey. it's, uh, it's, it's Dave Weiss, um, Sandy's husband. I, I live at the corner of uh, Ross and Ivory uh, for 20 years. First of all, good evening and thank you for uh, listening to me. Uh, I, I'm not going to rehash everything my neighbors have said because they've said it extremely well. It's just a matter of time before something happens. Um, this, the, this, the, the people have slowed down for sure, but not enough. And there's still a lot of speed. And I, I can see the the sign from my backyard where you, where that uh, tracks the speed. And I don't think I've seen a car that was under the 15 miles an hour. So. You know, they might have slowed down from 50, but they're still moving pretty quickly. So um, I think that's a good first step. But I think to avoid further incident, you know, I think we need to move to the next step. Thank you for uh, hearing me. Right. And I'm just also going to chime in, um, Sandra Weiss at 101 Ivory as well. And I work from home, so I sit here and I watch traffic all day long. Um, it's, I've seen cars pass each other when the kids get out of school. So school's starting up soon. That's a very big concern for me. Um, I've seen them passing on Ross Lane uh, multiple times every day after school. We've had the policemen sitting in my driveway, um, you know, trying to get them. But then they realized, you know, that the policeman was sitting there. So they, you know, did slow down during that time. But you can't have someone sitting there 24-7. But, you know, speed bumps, um, we'd also be happy to put a stop sign here in front of our house at Ross and Ivory to stop the traffic to slow them down. That may be an option if speed bumps are not an option. I, I don't know, but something definitely does have to be done, um, especially with school starting up again, and there's going to be more drivers on the road. Um, so thank you again for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Hilly, I've turned on your microphone. Okay, here's David. Please. Hi, good evening. Uh, David Sanic, uh, reference to item E5. And uh, I'm wondering if when the consultant looks at this at the pen dot right away, also consider looking at it as a possible road to access, improve access into and out of the park and safety. Thank you. 
Thank you. Chris, I've turned on your microphone. Good evening. Um, my name is Chris Kalicki. I'm a resident of the borough at the 100 block of Washington Avenue, and I own a business on the 200 block of Church Street. I wanted to make a comment regarding the street closures that we've had. I think that at the time um, when we needed them for COVID, they were a great way to help the restaurants, especially struggling through some hard times. I'm at this point asking the borough council to please consider either eliminating or modifying them. As a homeowner on the 100 block of Washington Avenue, the increased traffic and the difficulty with parking has really been stressful to deal with. The increased noise when the bars let out has also been really frustrating. We've had a lot of commercial vehicles, a lot of uh, buses coming down our street as well. And there are little kids that live here on the block. As far as being a business owner, my Saturday volume has dropped drastically. People don't want to fight the traffic and the parking to come out on Saturday. So our business has, our Saturday used to be our busiest day. Our business has dropped drastically as a result of this. It's really been hurting our business. We have tenants who live in the building where we're at also, we own the building. And there have been a lot of complaints with the difficulty that they're having in finding parking as well. So I, I do agree that we do need to help each other out through this pandemic and help all the businesses to thrive. Um, consider though, the restaurants have been at the receiving end of the benefits of this and all the other retail businesses have been at the other end and we've been suffering as a result of it. So I'd ask you to consider modifying or eliminating to help out the other businesses in town. Thanks for your time. At this time, Mr. Ewald, there's no other hands raised. Thank you very much. So at this point, we will close the first round of public participation. Oh, sure. I spoke too soon. Jane, I've turned on your microphone. Jane. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes. Hi, um, my name is Jane Mahaj. I live here with my husband, George, at the corner of Elton Drive and Ross Lane. Last Thursday, a drunk driver's car came to rest outside of my house. Um, some of my neighbors have described what happened with that. The woman just came off pod house, uh, bumped around uh, on each side of the street, different sidewalks. We are so blessed that we did not lose two people in our community. One of my neighbors was walking their dog with a 17 year old that lives across the street from me. It was from the grace of God that neither one of these uh, were hit. And the woman who stopped the drunk driver uh, was the woman who was walking down. Now my neighbors, I agree with my neighbors. There's some excellent suggestions tonight, possibly a stop sign, possibly making this a one way. I don't think any of us ever thought about that. That's a really good idea but just the speeding that goes on. I'm afraid to walk my dog down the street. I'm so afraid that somebody is going to, that we're just going to get hit. And while some drivers have slowed down, um, a lot haven't. And I think that we're risking a catastrophe without being, you know, without, without whatever tools we need to slow them down, whether it's ticketing um, or the speed bumps, or maybe there's other things that you can tell us what you can do to help us. We're not the experts in this, but obviously I've been here 21 years. Um, I know every single neighbor who spoke tonight, all of us in this development uh, want a speed bump or we want other, uh, uh, other actions taken. And we're just asking that we're thanking you for what you've done, but saying, please, we need a little bit more. Thank you for Thank you. listening to me. Thank you. Now I have no hands raised at this time, Mr. Ewald. Thank you very much. 
So at this time, we'll close the first round of public participation. Later on our agenda tonight, we will have a second round of public participation for any items if anybody uh, did not get a chance to participate this round. Uh, just to, you know, as we go into communications and council participation, I will just mention that this month's uh, policy committee meeting will be August 24th. That's a Tuesday in two weeks. At, and then this time of year, we do switch to 6 p.m. for our policy meetings. So Tuesday, August 24th at 6 p.m., we will be having our policy meeting. And I'm uh, confident that there will be several suggestions presented that night for uh, possible action to be taken for, for Ross Lane. So thank you to everybody who was able to comment tonight. Um, please dial back in on the 24th. Um, that also brings me to my second point. As COVID surges with the Delta variant, we will, for the remainder of August, be conducting meetings in the same format as we have been, which is the Zoom uh, portion for public part, uh, participation and viewing. And uh, since Harrisburg requires us to be in person, we will be in person here at Borough Hall. This will be for all committee meetings as well as council for at least the remainder of August. Uh, with that, is there any other council participation tonight? Ms. Dugan. Hi, oh, well, I was just going to uh, back up that I, I have been deal like, uh, dealing with the issue with the speeding and the, the disaster that's going on on Ross Lane right now. And I've been speaking with Elaine, who has ended up kind of the, uh, the lead person for this issue. And uh, I just want to make sure that this, tonight we're going to vote on making it um, enforceable and permanent, the, uh, the no trucks and the new speed limit. And then I'm looking forward to having um, all of this, all of these concerns go to policy and hopefully they can work out some sort of uh, speed mitigation idea or something, whether it's the speed bumps or whether it's, you know, all the ideas that have been out there. I really hope that policy, you know, gives this the attention that it deserves because it, it's something that has been going on for a while. Thank you. Thank you. Any other council participation tonight? I'm not sure if we lost Rich. Uh, yeah. Oh, got it. I don't see him on the big screen. Uh, the mayor is okay. the the mayor is uh, running late tonight. He will be joining us later, so we will move his mayor's report to later on into the agenda uh, as fit when he arrives. With that, uh, we'll move into appointments and public resolutions. Uh, we, we don't, don't have any public resolutions tonight. Uh, we do have a couple openings, um, though they are reduced through several uh, new volunteers, which we appreciate. But if any members of the public are interested in joining any of our various boards, committees, or commissions, please uh, take a look at our website. It has an up-to-date listing of any vacancies, upcoming vacancies, and the process for applying. So with that, we'll move into, uh, there is no new business, so we'll move into resolutions. Uh, tonight, we do have a resolution to consider uh, acknowledging the uh, service to the, let me just bring up all my notes here, uh, Samantha Anderson's service as a member on the Civil Service Commission. What is Council's pleasure? Mr. President, I'll make a motion to acknowledge Sam Samantha Anderson's service as a member of the Civil Service Commission. I'll second. Questions on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Uh, with that, I'll read this into the record. Uh, a resolution of gratitude for the public service of Samantha Anderson as, the mem as a member of the Civil Service Commission for the Borough of Phoenixville, Chester County, Pennsylvania. Whereas Samantha Anderson served diligently and honorably as a member of the Civil Service Commission from August 14th, 2018 through June 24th, 2021. And whereas Ms. Anderson provided invaluable and dedicated service to the, borough, the borough's Civil Service Commission and Borough Council during that time, and whereas Borough Council wishes to express its most sincere gratitude and appreciation to Samantha Anderson for all of her efforts and commitment to the borough in performing her dedicated responsibilities over the past three years. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Borough Council of the Borough of Phoenixville that Samantha Anderson is recognized and publicly acknowledged for her commitment and efforts in performing her duties and further does offer their best wishes in her future endeavors. I know Samantha moved out of town, so we will forward this to her new address. 
with that, we will move on to. Uh, we have two other resolutions tonight. Um, probably, uh, defer to Jean for the first for some background on the first one, or would you like a motion to start the conversation? Got it. Uh, so we have a motion here, uh, or we require a motion here to, to begin discussing this. What is council's pleasure? I'll make a motion to consider the resolution by borough council authorizing the sale of borough-owned real estate. I'll second. We have a motion by Ms. Berkeley, second by Mr. Weiss. Questions on the motion? Let's get some background if needed. Some background is that we, the borough, have uh, uh, several properties uh, in and around the borough that um, are basically uh, left over from demolitions that occurred in the past, uh, uh, property realignments. Uh, a lot of them are, uh, uh, they have the ability to do something with them and some don't. Uh, in this case, uh, we have a property at 241 Taylor. Uh, the first order of business is that we, we did, got an appraisal for the property uh, so that we had a good idea what that was. Then we advertised the, that the property uh, would be uh, available for uh, acquisition, uh, and that is through a seal bid process. Uh, those seal bids came in. Uh, we have uh, appropriate bids, and so the next step is for Borough Council to authorize the sale of the property through resolution, which is what's before you. And I defer to uh, the solicitor should, if I missed anything uh, in that statement. So this is a two-step process? Two-step. Got it. Yes. Three step back. Yeah. Well, the, the motions will be uh, related tonight on item B and C, and the borough code requires you to uh, offer the property for sale or allow the property to be sold through resolution, which is what you're doing as step number one. Questions on the motion from council? Great. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries seven zero. Next up, we will need a motion. Uh, so this is not a resolution. The third step is not a resolution. It's just a motion. Okay. So I will make a motion to consider staff recommendation to sell 241 Taylor Alley. Um, do I need to have all these? Yes. Yeah. TP tax, tax parcel number. Okay. Tax parcel number 15913E uh, to 249 Bridge Street, Inc. Second. We have a motion by Ms. Berkeley, second by Mr. Weiss. Questions on this motion? No, no question, Mr. President, but I think the motion should include the sales price of $60,150 as the highest bidder for the property. I'll amend. And the seconder? Uh, yes, I um, amend my second accordingly. Okay. Motion amended. Uh, any other questions on the motion? No, but just point of clarification. So our previous vote was just for sale. This is actually authorizing based on awarding the bid. Yeah. So we did do the, the sealed bid, the and this was the highest sealed bid. Yep. yep. Just to clarify for those listening at home. Yep. Any other questions? Great. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. With that, we'll move on to our first uh, set of public hearings. Uh, we'll need a motion to go into the first public hearing to repeal an ordinance. I'll make a motion to open a. I'll make a motion to open a public hearing to consider the ordinance amendment repealing Chapter Six Conduct Part Thirteen Temporary Face Coverings. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Soto, second by Ms. Berkeley. Questions on the motion? Seeing none. All those in favor? All right. Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. For our public hearing, our solicitor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the first public hearing tonight, as you indicated, is to repeal the face covering ordinance that's contained in Chapter 6 of the borough's codified ordinances. Uh, from a procedural standpoint, the notice of the hearing, as well as the intent to adopt the ordinance, was advertised in the Mercury on August 2nd of this year. A uh, complete copy of the proposed ordinance was also provided to the Chester County Law Library on July 14th of this year. Uh, the ordinance in front of you tonight essentially has one substantive section. 
It repeals in its entirety Part 13, temporary face coverings in Chapter 6. I believe this ordinance was enacted by Council last fall. Um, that uh, since you approved and required the face covering by ordinance, the proper method is to uh, repeal and delete that provision from your ordinance by another ordinance. So at this point, if there's any public comment with respect to uh, the proposed ordinance, uh, Ms. Logan will uh, acknowledge you if you raise your hand. If anyone has comment, we'd ask for your name and address and then direct your comments to Borough Council. We'll give a few moments here as there is a time delay between broadcast and reception. Mr. President, I would point out uh, while we're waiting for public comment that the ordinance has been advertised so council would have the legal ability to adopt the ordinance repealing the uh, requirement to wear temporary face coverings this evening if it decided to. Okay. Thank you, Chuck. Mr. Ewald, at this time I have no hands raised for public participation. Okay. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion by Mr. Soto, second by Ms. Berkeley to close the first public hearing. Uh, questions on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion, uh, motion carries 7 0. Uh, this public hearing is closed. Uh, we can take action on this item now. What is council's pleasure for item A? Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to um, have the ordinance amendment repealing chapter six conduct part 13 temporary face coverings. Second. To repeal the. That is correct. Okay, just wanna clarify. Uh, motion by Mr. Soto, second by Ms. Berkeley. Questions on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 6-0, or 6-1. Next up tonight, we have a, a second item for our um, regularly scheduled Chapter 15 amendments. What is Council's pleasure for the second public hearing? Mr. President, I'll make a motion to consider the ordinance amendment to Chapter 15, Motor Vehicles and Traffic. To open a public hearing. Open a public hearing. Sorry. To open the public hearing, excuse me. Second. Motion by Ms. Berkeley, second by Mr. Soto, to open a public hearing to consider the ordinance amendment to Chapter 15. Questions on the motion? Uh, just as our solicitor reminded us on the last one, uh, any members of the public wishing to make any public comment during this public hearing? You'll be able to raise your hand and staff will be able to call on you. Seeing no uh, questions on the motion, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Uh, we are now in the public hearing for motion for, for uh, um, chapter 15. Chuck. Okay, thank you, John. Um, the second public hearing as noted amends several sections of the Borough Master Traffic Ordinance. Uh, procedurally notice of this hearing and the intent to adopt the ordinance was advertised in the Mercury on August 2nd of this year because the complete copy of the ordinance was not advertised in the Mercury the requirement is that a copy pro be provided to the Chester County Law Library that occurred on July 14th uh, the ordinance in front of you essentially has six substantive section changes to the current master traffic ordinance for the borough Section 1 of the ordinance uh, amends Section 15201, establishing maximum speed limits on certain streets. Uh, obviously, that was a point of uh, discussion at the public participation. This would change or uh, modify the speed limit on Ross Lane to 15 miles per hour. Uh, the second section of the ordinance uh, addresses uh, noise that would be uh, arising from the operation of motor vehicles, it would amend and create a new section 15-225. The third substantive change to the ordinance uh, would relate to the size of vehicles that are permitted on certain streets. The section that would amend is 15-304, and it would limit the size of vehicles using Ross Lane. Uh, section 4 would amend section 15-402, 
which addresses pro parking prohibitions at all times in certain locations. In this case, it would provide for a parking prohibition on the south side of Bridge Street, and the ordinance, ordinance defines exactly where that location would occur. Um, the next section of the ordinance uh, would amend section 5-410, addressing residential permit parking. It would designate the various streets as zone A as residential permit parking areas. Those streets would include Dean Street, Hall Street, Jackson Street, Morgan Street, and Walnut Street. And the last substantive section to the ordinance under section eight would be to create a new section 15420, establishing requirements uh, for electric vehicle parking. Um, there are several provisions to that section of the ordinance. It provides for definitions. It designates where uh, electric vehicle parking spaces might occur, provides for public parking spaces for the charging of electrical vehicles, provides for some exemptions, uh, certain enforcement provisions, and establishes a vehicle charging fee or the parameters thereof. Um, that's the uh, summary of the ordinance. If there was anyone that wishes to provide public comment, to council regarding the ordinance changes, now would be the time to do that. As the president indicated, Ms. Logan would acknowledge you if you raise your hand and uh, you can provide your comments uh, to borough council. Thank you, Chuck. Give us some time here as there is a delay between broadcast and reception. There are a number of items in tonight's motor vehicle code ordinance mr president if, if there are no public comment council will be in position to close the public hearing and consider enacting the ordinance tonight as it's been advertised as such okay. thank you mr ewald at this time i have no hands raised thank you jen i'll make a motion to close the public hearing second Motion by Ms. Berkeley, seconded by Mr. Weiss to close this public hearing. Questions on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 7-0, so this round of, pub of public hearing is closed. What is council's pleasure for item B? Mr. President, I make a motion to uh, consider ordinance amendment to chapter 15, uh, motor vehicle and traffic. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Soto, second by Ms. Berkeley to adopt the ordinance. Questions on the ordinance? Mr. Moore. I, I have a couple, yeah. If, if uh, the borough manager could just explain to me, because I live in a development, so I don't have much knowledge of this. The um, for section five, the residential per permit parking area, how exactly does that work? Uh, do the residents need to be paying for that? And you know, what's the impact? So, residents. so this will be an expansion of zone a okay so zone a currently exists uh through several sections um just south of the downtown uh and this is the section east of main street and south of church street um and, and these small streets will be uh now part of the zone a enforcement and gene if there's anything else to cover no that, that, that's exactly it it's uh the the same uh uh, permit requirements, the same charges that are currently in existence for Zone A would be applied to these new uh, expansions of existing streets. And what is our process, if we were to adopt this tonight, what is our process of informing the people on these streets how they, how they, they are now required to get a permit? That's a good question. Uh, we will, we will be, we have a list of all of the residents and we'll be sending out information about what the, the cost is and what the process is. Um, uh, in all likelihood, prorate it between now and the end of the year and then pick it back up in December for the 2022 uh, timeframe. So it's an annual fee? Yes. And um, if you move out halfway through, do you get a no. refund? Okay. Um, okay. My, my next question contains the electric vehicle parking. Um, looking at section uh, four, um, 
I'm sorry. Okay, uh, section four, uh, item C, electric vehicles are authorized to park in the spaces designated within lots per section 15701. Only during the time the vehicle is connected to electric charging purposes. When the vehicle is no longer charging, the owner or the operator of said vehicle is required to remove the vehicle from the charging station space. Uh, how, is, how is that enforced? Or even how do we conceive to enforce such a rule? The challenge is that we don't have somebody, uh, I hate to say this out loud, but we don't have somebody between certain hours, but we do have the ability to bring people in. So, and we have done that in the past just to keep a level of honesty that periodically we will assign somebody late in the evening or early in the morning to come in and, and do a check on that. It's not something we do every, every night. So the ordinance by doing it this way allows us to periodically go in and do that uh, review. I think the, um, the, the, the second, secondary purpose um, to this section when we were discussing this was that uh, the, the idea of the chargers is as, a, as an amenity um, and that cycling is important between spaces. So uh, the goal was to not have a vehicle parked there for eight hours at a time if it's not charging. So can you access the charger and see whether it's charging or not? I mean, how, how, does, how, does, how does somebody who's in you know, parking enforcement inspect a vehicle and know whether if, it's If the vehicle is not attached to the charging port, if it's not plugged in. I guess what I'm saying is, you know, somebody parks it there at, you know, 8 o'clock at night and leaves it plugged in all night. How do we know it's not charging? Well, well, we are instituting the um, well, the four, well, we're we are instituting the overnight rate as well. So there there will be the ability to park overnight, um, in which case they pay a different fee. But in in that case, you know, there's the expectation that at some point it will not be charging anymore. Presumably. But if it's not connected, then it should be parked elsewhere. Other questions on the ordinance adoption motion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Okay. Moving on to reports of committees, boards, and commissions. We have Mr. Moore with the Planning Commission. Microphone. Thank you, pardon. Uh, so we had no formal decisions, uh, and, and so no bit, no formal business in front of the borough council from the uh, previous meeting. We did have some several discussions. Uh, a lot of progress made on the uh, Steel Point uh, multifamily uh, apartment building. Um, the developer came back and significantly adjusted down in response to the commission's concerns, uh, the size and improved. The layout of that, and so that was um, much appreciated, and further discussion on that. Uh, a few other items in terms of project dates were discussed. Um, we were also discussing, and I think I've shared this with some of the other council members, um, um, recommendations from our um, Dave Boper about uh, taking some additional steps on our zoning ordinances in terms of addressing adaptive reuse parking and mixed use growth uh, planning commission will be taking up details on that with our next meeting and uh hopefully we'll have some recommendations for dave to then share as he's allowed to as in his office uh with eventually with policy so uh that'll be hopefully with in front of us within the next month or two we're starting through the committee process that's my main update. Um, we do have a meeting uh, this Thursday uh, at uh, 6. Thank you, Ms. Moore. With that, we'll move on to Mr. Weiss with HARB. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Um, no action to report uh, this month out of HARB. Uh, our next meeting is um, Monday, Tuesday, um, right after Memorial, or right after Labor Day. 
Thank you, Mr. Weiss. Thanks, Bob. Uh, Fiendsville Regional Planning Committee, Mr. Kirkner. Thank you, Mr. President. Not much to report. It has been a, a fairly quiet month. Um, we received an update on the DeVault Trail activation plan from the Chester County Planning Commission. And also the Regional Planning Committee is moving ahead with its Regional Trail Committee. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Mr. President, if I might add, uh, uh, as Mr. Kirk knows, the the uh, regional comp plan is being uh, updated and it is uh, it's ready for adoption. Uh, all of the municipalities are going through the, the process. Uh, uh, and as far as the borough is concerned, we, I would recommend uh, uh, possibly getting a motion tonight to authorize uh, staff to schedule and advertise a public hearing for the adoption resolution that's required in the MPC. Uh, uh, we would do that for the September 14th meeting, if that's okay, Mr. Kirkner. Yeah, so I'll, I'll make a motion to that effect. I'll second it. Motion by Mr. Kirkner, second by Mr. Soto, and this is to advertise the um, update to the Regional Planning Committee comp plan. The, the update and the, and the resolution, yes. Okay. Very good. To advertise. To advertise the public hearing for Got it. adoption. Just want to make sure I was on the same page. Uh, any questions on the motion? Mr. Soto? After the advertisement, um, that would be for the October's council meeting. Is that the idea that the October's council meeting would be a public hearing? No, it would, the public hearing would be at the September 14th meeting. Uh, we would advertise it uh, uh, August 30th and September 6th. Thank you. Any other questions on the motion? Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, quickly, I was just wondering, does this uh, new regional plan address anything about the, uh, the multifamily dwellings and things like that? So th I believe this uh, comp plan update is largely about adding in another municipality to the regional planning committee. Is that succinct? West Pikeland is joining the, the committee. Okay. Yeah. So it won't have any impact on our actual comp or zoning. Any other questions on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries 7 0. Uh, Rec Board, Ms. Dugan. Okay, there's a bunch of things coming up. Um, and as always, uh, the uh, registration is in, uh, available on phoenixville.org on the Parks and Recreation page. Um, we've got coming up soccer shots. It's a children's soccer program with a focus on character development for ages two to eight. That's at Morris Street Park. That'll be on um, Saturdays. That's an eight-week pro program. And then there's also one on Sundays. It's also an eight-week program. Then we have Jump Start Sports, T-Bird, T-Ball. And that's a instructional um, educate. It's for baseball for three to five-year-old boys and girls. And just learning the basics of throwing, catching, fielding, that would be a friendship. Well, actually, that should be Pat, Maddle, Pat Nattlefield. But, um, and that is uh, starting September 11th through October 9th. There's Youth, youth CrossFit. And that's for a uh, socially distanced outdoor CrossFit workouts on Saturday mornings at Reeves Park. And they can be modifi modified for any ability, so all are welcome. And this is free. It's for ages 12, uh, 13 to 18. And then we have yoga for teens, all uh, levels of yoga classes for youth ages 13 to 18. At Reeves Park, Sunday mornings starting September 19th. And then finally, we have a mixed media art class for ages 5 to 14. And this is just uh, the, the example here is we believe everyone can and should learn how to draw. And we want to give everyone an opportunity to find their inner artist. So this will be at the Phoenixville Civic Center. It's an eight-week program from 5.30 to 6.30 from September 16th to November 4th. And that's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Dugan. As always, a lot of great programs out of the rec department. Uh, Mr. Soto, BAC. BAC did not meet this month. Uh, next month, uh, we will be meeting on September 6th. Is that right? 7th. Tuesday. You. And I just wanted to ask, that's scheduled to be a virtual session, or is that going to be in person committee? For, for now, um, I think the 
uh, the course of action for at least the foreseeable future. I, I know Mr. Uh, Ewald said, you know, at least through August, but I would venture to say that uh, this is the way we're going to be until we change it back. And that way we're, we're covered for, for the, rest of the, the rest of the year. Uh, it would be nice if we didn't have to do this, but I think it's best to say that we'll, we'll stay this way until we're not. I think that's a prudent statement. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Craig. Nothing else from, from EAC. Thank you, Mr. Soto. Ms. Berkeley with Tree Advisory Commission. Yes, we met last night. Um, so we have really great news. We are almost 100% uh, inventory. So we are working with the arborist to inventory all uh, trees in the right away, all our borough trees, and then get them in our um, online system. So that's getting, we're getting closer on that. He also gave a really nice explanation again about why we tag the trees the way we do. So there's a brass tag that's used and a screw is used, and that is actually better for the tree because it can come out. Um, he is been do, using that method for over 25 years. The brass tag is great because it, it holds up um, and it, it doesn't get damage to the tree or get damaged itself um, and can be taken off again um, and reworked if needed. So great updates from Tree Advisory Commission. Um, they are also working on getting some volunteers together for uh, watering and for pruning. So if you're interested, please e email the Tree Advisory Commission at phoenixville.org uh, and Mary will get you set up with the volunteer list. Thank you, Ms. Berkeley. I think there is a remarkable similarity between the tree tags and the former steel company employee tags. They are nearly the same image, so it's a nice thing to see around town again. I'd also like to appreciate the post on Facebook explaining that because there was a lot of on what's going on, and I think that clarified a lot. Absolutely. Okay, with that, we'll move on to council action referred to from uh, committees. First up, we have police personnel and public safety, Ms. Berkeley. Hi there, we do have a reappointment, so I would like to make a motion to reappoint William Felton to the Historic and Architectural Review Board for a new term that will expire August 31st, 2025. Second. Motion by Ms. Berkeley, second by Ms. Dugan. Questions on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion opposed. Motion, motion carries 7 0. Anything else tonight, Ms. Berkeley? That is it. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Next up tonight, we have uh, with Mr. Soto, Parks and Rec Committee. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm going to section this out in what might be logical terms. So we'll just start with uh, the first item. Uh, the, uh, I'd like to make a motion. Uh, with the uh, staff consideration uh, recommending the Reservoir Dogs Disc Golf Club as recommended in Committee 3 0. Motion by Mr. Soto, second by Ms. Dugan. Questions on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Motion carries 7 0. Mr. Duke, Mr. Soto. Sure. And now we'll just, uh, I'm going to bundle all of the events recommended out of committee together, starting with item two. Um, so I'll make a motion to recommend the temporary community event application for Green Earth Festival under the Veterans Memorial Gay Street Bridge on Saturday, September 18th, 2021 from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, street closures are none, conditioned upon receipt of all fees and valid certificate of insurance naming the borough as additional insured five business days from the date of the council approval as recommended in committee three zero and the temporary community event for the 200th year independence celebration of guatemala honduras and el salvador independence in reservoir park on saturday september 18th 2021 from 2 p.m to 8 p.m street closures none same, Same conditions, conditions for insurance. insurance. And the temporary community event application for the halfway to St. Patrick's Day at 193-197 Bridge Street on Saturday, September 18th, 2021 from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Street closures, the 100 block of Bridge Street. Conditions the same for insurance. 
and the temporary community event application for Phoenixville Art Festival on the 200 block of Bridge Street on Saturday, September 25th, 2021 from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Street closures are 200 block of Bridge Street from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. conditioned upon uh, that all fees and vow certificate of insurance naming the borough's additional insured. And the temporary community event application for Shoes and Brews 26.2 kilometer run in the 100 block of Bridge Street on Sunday, October 3rd, 2021 from 9.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Street closures 100 block of Bridge Street from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. conditioned upon the receipt of all fees and vow certificate naming the borough naming as additional insured. And a temporary community event application for the Kilhul Wedding Vow Renewal Ceremony at Reeves Park on Saturday, October 16th, 2021 from 3 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Street closures none. Same insurance conditions. Temporary community event application for the Citizens Advocacy 35th anniversary, sorry, 35th annual Phoenixville run at Reeves Park on Saturday, October 23rd from 2021, sorry, October 23rd, 2021 from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. Street closures, 2nd Avenue between Star Street and Main Street from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. Same conditions of insurance. Temporary community event application for the Phoenixville Harvest Festival in multiple locations throughout the borough between Thursday, October 28th on su uh, Sunday through Sunday, October 31st, 2021. Main and Bridge Street lot closure on Friday, October 29th from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. and Saturday, October 30th from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. and Sunday, October 31st from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. as recommended in Committee 30. And adding the temporary community event application for the Fall Festival at Reeves Park on Saturday, October 30th, 2021 from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. Street closures for 3rd Avenue between Star Street and Main Street from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. as recommended in Committee 30. And a temporary community event application for the Phoenixville Bed Races at 20, uh, 2021 at Reeves Park and 3rd Avenue on Saturday, November 6, 2021, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Street closures, 3rd Avenue between Main Street and Star Street, and B Street between 3rd Avenue and 4th Avenue from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Same insurance conditions. Temporary community event application for movie in the park at Reeves Park Ball Field on Saturday, November 9th, 2021, from 7.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Street closures are none. and the same insurance conditions. The temporary community event application for Burn Off the Bird 5K on the Schuylkill River Trail on Saturday, November 27th, 2021, from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Street closures are Grant Street between Franklin Avenue and Fairview Street from 8.30 a.m. to 11 a.m., conditioned upon receipt of all fees and valid certificate of insurance named borough as additional insured five business days from the date of borough council approval, as recommended in Committee 30. And the temporary community event application for first Friday on September 3rd, October 1st, and November 5th from 5.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., Bridge and Main Street parking lot closures from 12 p.m. to 10 p.m., as recommended in Committee 30. And that, that concludes, concludes all the recommended, recommended events. Second. second. We have a motion, motion by Mr. Soto, second, second by Mr. Moore. For, for those keeping track at home, that was items two through 14 under part B of council action. action. Any, Any questions, questions or comments, comments on, on this motion, motion from, from council? Mm -hmm. Mr. Mr. President, just for a point of clarification, I will need to abstain from items five, 11, 12, and 13. Yep, yep. Understood. understood. Uh, yeah, I had a question uh, about the uh, 200th anniversary of independence for, um, I think it was Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. Um, there was a note in our packet that there was a concern from staff about parking issues with this event and this location. Were those, uh, was that worked through? The date on the note was from the 14th of July. It's on page three of the document that we have in our packets. Uh, Ms. Um, my understanding is she did talk to Melissa and Melissa's given her some alternative uh, locations for parking. Um, it was more of a concern just because of how popular that area is with the disc golf and with the dog park. 
Um, so I think that they were working out alternative uh, places to send uh, the, the people who are going, uh, you know, some alternative public places, not private places, as well as I think she, she may have said uh, to talk to um, uh, Brighton Sounds Academy or something along those lines to use their parking lot. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. So, so just, just uh, on, top on top of, of the insurance, insurance requirements that are attached to each of these, I do, do want to make it clear that, that um, as, as we, we go, go into the fall, uh, we, we do not know what we don't know. So any item, any TCE can be revoked at any given time um, due to any uh, public health concerns. So we've made that clear to every applicant and just making sure that everybody from the public understands that um, any of these items could be canceled should they need to be. Uh, and we will obviously, obviously work, work with them to give them the most, most amount of runway, of, as we always have, if, if such a decision were to have, have to be made. Um, and in, in the cases of any events that are on Bridge Street, should, should, should anything, anything change, change with the Bridge Street closure, closure those changes would also affect, uh, affect their, their application. application. So, so again, again, these are conversations we've had with each of the applicants, but uh, just so everybody on council was aware of uh, the conversations we had to to try, try to mitigate, mitigate any future public health issues this fall. Mr. Moore. Moore. To, to clarify, clarify the question of Bridge Street uh, uh, and the 100 and 200 block and also the, the uh, um, parking lot, if, if we, we were, were to modify the Bridge Street closure, would our passing or approving these event applications then supersede that? And they would, those streets would then be closed for these, these events because they've applied for them. I'll defer to Mr. Crack on that one, but that, 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 that's true. That's why we put that in there is uh, uh, not knowing what, you know, could happen. There's been a lot of up and down discussion and what have you. So rather than force these folks to have to come back through with any changes, we incorporated the closure as if there wasn't a COVID situation as we would normally do. Uh, so. Currently, those, those streets are closed and they wouldn't have an impact. But if you made a different decision, they still would be closed for their event for that particular date. So we try to make it easy on everybody to get through the process and not have to bring everybody back just for a, a street closure. I'll also make the observation that it's very heartening to see, you know, after a year of not being able to do any of these, that so many people and some new people came back, back to get involved with, with us downtown, downtown again. again. I mean, it's, it's heartening. Absolutely. Any, Any other questions, questions or comments on the motion? motion? And again, again, this, this is items two through 14. 14. Seeing, Seeing none, all those in favor? Uh, opposed, motion, motion carries 7-0. Six, six zero, zero and a partial. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It'll, It'll be, be reflected as to which she cannot, cannot which, which, yep. Correct. Uh, okay. okay. With, with that, that, Mr. Soto? Soto? Sure. With, with respect to um, item 15, uh, did, did not come with a recommendation on committee, but for uh, discussion sake, I'd like to make a motion to recommend a temporary community event application for a whole lot of Lulu at Bridge and Main Street parking lot on Saturday, October 23rd, 2021 from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. I'll second. Motion, motion by Mr. Soto, second, second by Mr. Weiss. Weiss. Uh, I believe staff has some background on some of the conversations that they were able to have uh, between uh, committee meeting and tonight. Mr. Crack? Just for, for, for clarity purposes, we had several staff meetings uh, in-house first and then uh, uh, secondarily with the, the applicants. Uh, we believe we've resolved uh, to the degree and satisfaction for both sides that uh, what you have before you is uh, approvable. Uh, that we, we understand what we need to do and they understand what they need to do. Uh, and not have to go into a lot of great detail here, but we resolved the street issues. Uh, and uh, I think we've got a, uh, you got a good go here if you, if you so desire. And, and since the, the, the motion that's on the agenda is actually different than what the, the revised application is, is that? Yeah, I did not include the, the details past the time. Correct. Um, so I will like to maybe amend my motion to reflect um, no street closures within the new application. Is that correct? No additional street closures. No additional street closures. Thank you. Correct. 
And I guess I also should mention that the parking lot on Church and Bridge, sorry, the Bridge and Main Street to be closed from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. as part of this application. Correct. Condition upon uh, receipt of all fees and a valid certificate insurance name and borough is additionally insured. Five business days from borough council approval. I'll amend my second accordingly. Thank you. Any, Any other questions, questions on this one, Mr. Moore? So just, just to clarify, we will be closing Main Street. No. 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 So, so, so the closure or the, the, the revised application that's in our packet, and that's, that's why, why I pointed out that the, the agenda was reflected, reflected from the committee, from the committee meeting. Um, but the, the, the revised, revised application is that they will be using the Main and Bridge Street parking lot and will have vehicular access to that parking lot. Um, and that's where the, uh, the majority of the event will be taking place. Thank, Thank you. you. I, I see the proper, proper form now. No, no problem. problem. And, and again, again as, as I mentioned for the last bundled sections, sections you know, any of these events are, are under the um, watchful, watchful eye of, of, of any health department regulations. regulations. Any, any other questions, questions on the motion? motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Mr. Soto. Thank you, Mr. President. President. Um, Another, uh, I'd like to make a motion to uh, recommend the temporary committee event application for the Firebird Festival at Veterans Park on Saturday, December 11th, 2021, from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Street closures, Mara Road between St. Mary's and Norridge Drive from 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. Condition upon receipt of all fees and valid certificate of insurance naming the borough as additional insured, five business days from the date of borough council approval. Second. Motion, motion by Mr. Soto, Soto second by Mr. Moore. Moore. Questions on the motion, on the motion. application. Great. Great. All, All those, those in favor? favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries 601 with Ms. Berkeley abstaining. Mr. Mr. Soto. That's, That's all from Parks, Parks and Recreation. Recreation. Uh, and Mr. Soto, do you want to carry on for policy? Sure, sure Mr. Uh, President. Um, there is no uh, no actions to consider coming out of policy committee. Uh, our next meeting is in two weeks, I believe. Two weeks. Indeed, two weeks. Thank you, Mr. Soto. Uh, just for the uh, minutes, our mayor did join us at 7.55. With, with that, we'll move on to Mr. Weiss, Weiss with Infrastructure, Technology, and Transportation, Technology and Transportation Committee. Uh, yes, thank, thank you, Mr. President. President. Um, one item out of uh, ITT this month, and then it is to, uh, I'd like to make a motion to consider a waiver request for um, uh, 110 to 112 High Street as recommended in Committee 3 to 0. Second. Motion by Mr. Weiss, second by Ms. Berkeley. Uh, for, for, for those who may not pay as close attention, attention this, this item is a waiver request, request that would normally come through planning commission if it was a larger item. Since it's a single uh, unit dwelling, dwelling, it does not go through planning commission for the waiver request, so it just comes directly to us. Any, Any questions on the motion? Seeing, Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion, motion carries 7 0. Mr. Weiss. Weiss. Uh, yes, uh, that's the last item out of ITT this week or this month. Uh, just a reminder that our next meeting is one week from today on uh, August 17th at 7 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Moving, Moving on to Finance, Finance Committee with Ms. Dugan. I'm going to bundle one through four. I'll make a motion to approve the 2021 prepaids dated 6 5 2021 to 7-2-2021 in the amount of $1,576,699.42. Excuse me. Uh, to approve the 2021 prepaid credit card statement dated 6 5 2021 to 7-2-2021 in the amount of $79,912.25. To approve the 2021 prepaid ACH dated 6-30-2021 in the amount of $29,011.02. And to approve the budget increase 2021-015 in the amount of $4,328.08 from the sanitation recycling account to recycling vehicle maintenance for the cost of service and repair to the Beast Grinder. 
Second. Second. Motion, motion by Ms. Dugan, Dugan second by Mr. Moore. Questions, questions on, on the motions uh, bundling items, items one through four of finance. Uh, yeah, just, just one question about item four. Um, um, just, just curious how, how this is normally handled, and um, is this something we normally plan for and budget for, or, or is this our standard process when maintenance is required on a piece of equipment like this? We, we normally, normally have a little bit of uh, headroom in our, in our, in our budget, budget for maintenance, but sometimes with a lot of activity and what have you, it goes above and beyond that. And so I would rather come back in with a budget increase in, if it were to occur this late in the year rather than budget a higher number and have it fall back into the general fund. So that's why you, you have an idea of normal maintenance versus over and over and above. And over and above usually because something more happened. Makes, makes perfect, perfect sense. sense. Thank, Thank you, Gene. Any, Any other questions, questions on the motion? motion? Seeing, Seeing not all those in favor. favor. Uh, Aye. Opposed? I don't, I don't see, see Rich, Rich. So I'm going to call this 6-0. Ms. Dugan? And finally, I'll make a motion to approve the Campbell Thomas proposal for PennDOT Row Trail. And I would also ask Mr. Kraft to explain it more further to everyone else after we get a second. Second. Motion by Ms. Dugan, second by Mr. Moore. Questions on the motion? Or any background needed for anyone? Sorry, I was just writing down who did what. Okay, so um, across the, uh, the as, as uh, council knows, across the top of the borough, uh, above the Reservoir Park area between uh, Route 113, Black Rock Road, and Township Line Road, uh, there is a number of parcels that are referred to as PennDOT right-of-ways for a project that was identified way back in the 60s uh, as an idea of a connector between route, uh, uh, State uh, uh, Highway uh, 422 and the, the intersection of where 724 and 23 are currently at in East Pikeland Township. Over the course of all of those years, uh, the, the amount of property needed uh, for PennDOT road uh, enhancement gets increased because new design, new technology, etc. Cost of bridges across the Schuylkill go way up. Uh, and, and the availability, availability of the property goes away because of uh, sale of property around, uh, around that. Basically, all of the property around us has been uh, obliterated in a way that it's, uh, it's unusable, and the remaining final pieces of FedNOT right away are in the borough. A goodly portion of that is already uh, borough property because it's part of Reservoir Park between uh, uh, Crombie Road and, uh, uh, and Dayton. So there's, there's a couple of sections on either side. Uh, and we've had for a long time the idea of possibly connecting, originally connecting uh, the middle of the North Ward in, 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 in Reservoir Park over to the Schuylkill River Trail. Uh, but, uh, but over, over the course of time, time we also were able, able to acquire a parcel of uh, uh, along Route 113 that basically is, is uh, between Route 113 and the Schuylkill River. And the county has a, uh, uh, the property along the Schuylkill River, basically from the Black Rock Sanctuary all the way into the downtown. When you, when you look at that from above, you go up 10,000 feet, you look at it, you can clearly see that the borough has the ability to make a connection from the river to Township Line Road uh, uh, between all of those areas using that PennDOT right-of-way. Uh, it became really obvious to us uh, a couple of years ago, and we submitted an application to DVRPC to, uh, to study that, and uh, unfortunately, DVRPC they didn't want us to study it, they wanted us to plan it. Uh, and so the, the, uh, the funding for that uh, was not given to the borough to do that. What we have here is now that we've identified this, we want to do the plan. And as you know, we've been very uh, successful in a lot of the projects that we do in the borough because you've been uh, willing to, to support staff by allowing the planning of various projects to occur. That becomes a match from, from our perspective to other funding and availability of funding. Uh, so, so this, what we did is we identified two pieces of, of this. One is the, 
the, the cost to uh, uh, work out the detail with PennDOT as it relates to the right of way. And that's what's before you tonight. The larger amount of money that's in the proposal would be the design and engineering, and we wanted to give you an idea of what the cost of uh, that would be to do the design and engineering. And I had mentioned at the Finance Committee that, that what this does is it sets us up for other opportunities. In, in fact, in since, since that two-week two time frame, we have had a conversation with uh, Delaware Valley Regional, Valley Regional Planning Commission, and they have a grant uh, under the uh, set-aside funding that would allow us to, uh, to, to apply for, and we are applying for, as of Friday of this week, uh, for, for the, the, the funding to do the design and engineering and construction of that, uh, that particular trail. And, and so, so we're getting numbers from uh, uh, CT at C here to what that cost might be. There's, There's no guarantee we would get the grant, but that's, that's how fast some of these things turn around. And, and we were poised, and we were, we were able to tell them what we were doing. And so uh, they they've encouraged, encouraged us to make the application, which will formally be, I believe, in October. Um, and, and Kelly, Kelly could shake her head, head. yes, okay, in October. Uh, we, we have, have to, to send, send a letter of interest in by Friday. Friday. Actually, it's due Monday, Monday but we're sending it in on Friday. Friday. So already, we're already working on uh, the, the next steps of, of being able, able to do this. So uh, it's, it's the way we've been, been doing, doing it all along, and it, it, it just, here we are again, uh, poised to be in front of a whole lot of other people by getting... Uh, the work, the work done, done to get the right of way and then coming back and making a uh, connection and showing DVRPC not, not only the connection between Township Line Road and, uh, uh, and, and the river, but also uh, you had mentioned earlier about the Devault Line and there's, there's, uh, uh, there's some more work in Upper Providence Township where they're looking at doing some, uh, some work over on their side of the Devault Launch, possibly make a connection. So, uh, these, these guys, guys are already working, working on a map that's, that's going to expand and show all of those pieces uh, uh, so, so that we make, make our submission, it'll uh, show the value of uh, our application for uh, this PennDOT right away and, and how it interacts with all of the uh, other trail connections. And ultimately, uh, the north side directly connected uh, into, the, into the downtown and along the Scooper River Trail and ultimately, uh, hopefully someday, the uh, Devault Trail. That was, that was a lot. lot. <laughs> You've You've got, got, it, it also connects, connects the rec center. center. Minor details. Sorry, Sorry Rich. Any, Any other questions, questions on the it, 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 it's, it's hard to describe just how many things this, this one, one uh, parcel, parcel would uh, connect. So, so. Um, any, any other questions, questions on the motion on the, on the proposal? If I may, Mr. Mr. President, if I, if I may make one comment with this, uh, this ties the North, this is for the multitudes of North Ward residents who are still watching the meeting and will watch it on TV later. Um, this ties in the North Ward neighborhoods, specifically the ledges and river walk very nicely into our trail system, um, as well as getting to the, the new rec center and bringing it bringing that closer to the, um, the, the old north side, so to speak. So this, this, really, this really makes, improves accessibility from our sidewalk grid to the trail system, if it goes forward. Thank you. And it, 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 really it really does provide a really interesting, interesting and dynamic, dynamic connection from the Schooler River, River Trail across the north side to, to the rec center, center to the uh, Renaissance, Renaissance Academy, Academy, everything would be accessible, accessible safely um, via this, this, this new trail. trail. So, uh, any, any other, other questions, questions or comments on the motion? motion? Seeing, Seeing none, all those in favor? favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries 7 0. Ms. Dugan. That's, That's all I have for tonight. tonight. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, uh, Due to, I'm um, rearranging the agenda slightly to move item seven, uh, mayor's report to now.
Mr. Mayor. Mayor. Thank, thank you, you so, so much, Mr. President. President. Everyone, thank you so much for being here. here. And, and to all of you who are tuning in virtually, thanks for joining us. Just, just a couple of things to report on, some things that have already happened. Uh, congratulations to all of the annual Caregiver Award recipients, which is courtesy of Miss Kitty's Care. That took place in July. Also, uh, congratulations to Alianza to Phoenixville. They had their uh, wonderful festival, although very different from years past, a much smaller scale down version. But they were able to still get together and celebrate um, our wonderful Latino community that we have here in Phoenixville. Coming up on August 12th, Crescendo, which is an absolutely free program done through Barclay Elementary School, which helps children learn violin, will be performing at the Sound Bank. And so I hope if anyone's able to attend that, that's at the Sound Bank on August 12th. Also on September 12th, we will have the Clinic Field Day. Um, it is an incredible event which uh, benefits the clinic, which is right on church. Church Street. Also, I wanted to give a very special welcome to all of our new teachers who will be joining the district this year, and uh, to all of our students, whether you're a college student, uh, whether you're going into kindergarten, or you're going into your senior year in high school, I wish you the very best, and as do all of your elected officials, we wish you the very best as you start off on your first days of school. So that's coming up very, very quickly. And I just wanted to also make a special mention that uh, Dr. Craig Parkinson, who has been the um, principal of our high school for He's been with the school district for over 10 years. Dr. Parkinson is sadly moving. Uh, exciting for his new district, he will actually be the superintendent of Chester Upland School District. So although we are sad to lose Dr. Parkinson, we are very excited for his new school district, and we will be following him on his adventure. And finally, I just wanted to give a very special uh, recognition to our Sergeant Pat Mark, Corporal Nick Natale, uh, Detective Highland, Sergeant Nemec, along with our Chief and Lieutenant they recently received an award from our district attorney, Deb Ryan, uh, for the completion of a very difficult case, uh, which took place oh, almost three years ago. Um, so congratulations to all of those officers who worked on that case. And thank you so much to our district attorney for that wonderful recognition of the Phoenixville Police Department. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, Sorry, just to add to that, add to that. Uh, as we're, we're all still experiencing a variety of uh, new experiences, 2020, 2021, um, just thank you so much to everyone in our community for continuing to exercise patience and kindness and courtesy. Certainly, as things change, uh, we ask only that you be cautious and that you continue to be patient with everyone in our community. I know that we are all struggling, and at times it can be very frustrating to keep up with all the uh, changes that are occurring, but at the same time, I'm certainly we are trying our very best to keep everyone in our community safe and ha healthy and at the same time if you are able to do so I beg of you please uh, go and get yourself vaccinated visit our dear friends at the Gateway Pharmacy any of your local pharmacies and also the vaccine clinics that are taking place throughout our county you can go to chesco.org chesco c-h-e-s-c-o.org click on COVID-19 and you can find a vaccination location near you but if you are able to do so please do so and get yourself vaccinated be safe be healthy you sure? Okay. With, With that, that, we're going to open, open up our second, second and final round of public participation. participation. Any, Any members of the public who are joining us virtually tonight through the Zoom platform may raise their hand. hand. We'll have a member of our staff uh, announce you and unmute your microphone to allow you to speak and make comment uh, to council. Uh, understand there's a slight delay. We will uh, give a few moments here to, for everything to get caught up. but. Any, any members of the public wishing, wishing to make any comment, comment please raise your hand digitally, and uh, a member, member of our staff will, will allow you to, to come, come online on with us here. Mr. Ewald, I have no hands raised at this time. With, With that, that, we will close this round of public participation. participation. Uh, staff, staff reports were in uh, council's, council's packets. packets. Are, Are there any questions on any staff reports tonight? tonight? We have we no old business uh, to deal with. with. And, and to the joy of our TV crew, we will be adjourning into executive session to discuss real estate litigation and personnel. Uh, we will we'll need a motion to do that. I'll make a motion to adjourn to executive session. Second. Questions on the motion? 
Seeing, Seeing none, all in favor? favor. Uh, motion motion carries 7-0. Thank, Thank you very much, everybody. We'll see you shortly. shortly.